Stephen Curry's been the biggest victim of the social media era, with people starting narratives all over the internet based around how he's a one-dimensional player and subpar defender. Realistically, the most important player to the Warriors dynasty by far will face off against his rival on opening night, LeBron James, who Philadelphia 76ers legend Julius Irving just said will finish his career as the greatest player of all time. That's become the normality in terms of takes about LBJ, whereas with SC, people tend to hold their tongues when putting him in the GOAT discussion. So why isn't Steph widely regarded as being on the NBA's Mount Rushmore like LeBron is? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 9.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Now into the content. Even as a proud owner of Under Armour's Curry 8s, which I've enjoyed playing in this summer, I'd have to say, from a marketability standpoint, Steph choosing Under Armour over Nike or Jordan may have been the worst decision he ever made. With LeBron James becoming the poster boy of Nike, along with winning four championships and finals MVPs, to go along with iconic moment one after the other, then whether it was the billboards, the endlessly promoted shoes, or the commercials, that combination of LBJ's greatness and the top-notch company he had signed to back when he played at St. Vincent St. Mary's High School catapulted the man into a global icon. Not to mention, even a year before he signed with Nike, LeBron's jump out of the gym athleticism had him dubbed as the chosen one on the cover of Sports Illustrated. The Hollywood personality and confidence that LeBron had off the court combined with how he could take over the game both mentally and physically between the lines, and the resume he was building up which consisted of owning an entire conference for a decade straight, all of that has given modern day fans the leeway to claim LeBron isn't only a bona fide top 2-4 to four player ever, but that he's above Michael Jordan as the greatest player ever. Night Night Celebration aside, Under Armour and Stephen Curry haven't had nearly the global impact that Nike and LeBron James have had. Also, since Steph isn't the athlete that LeBron is, and fans love players posterizing each other, that makes Curry less marketable than James. That lack of marketability is why, despite Curry being the only player next to Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan to lead one team to four championships since 2000, you have people saying he's not even close to LeBron. The lack of marketability even resulted in awards being taken away from Steph, like the finals MVP in 2015. And it was also why Kevin Durant is still to this day widely regarded as the most important player to the Warriors dynasty, at least among casuals he is. It's why you have Warrior fans split into two sections, one being Draymond stands and the other being Curry stands. Lest we forget, long before Durant had even considered joining the Warriors, Golden State was one win away from winning back-to-back -back championships. Of course, the iconic 3-1 series comeback LeBron, Kyrie, and Love made on the Warriors, with James stuffing Curry in Game 6, all fueled the narrative that James and Curry shouldn't even be mentioned in the same sentence. When Durant joined, it was like every ounce of credit was ripped out of Steph's hands, so it doesn't mean much to people that up to this date, Curry has a 3-1 lead over James in finals matchups. But maybe that should matter after what we just saw in 2022's playoffs. Let me explain. Of course, Durant made the Warriors unfair when he was there, and there's validity to folks not caring about Curry having that 3-1 series lead in finals matchups, but the impact Steph makes is much quieter than 6'8 plus mega athletes have. His 2022 finals run proved that his impact can also be incredibly loud, with his criminally underrated ball handling and underappreciated balance in his all-time best shooting stroke, but just think back to when Iguodala took his finals MVP in 2015. Steph's getting trapped the moment he passes half court, which limits both his point and assist totals. However, what that drawn attention does do is allow a player like Iguodala to look like a superstar. Meanwhile, minus the services of the best defensive gravity drawer of all time on his team, Kevin Durant was just swept in this year's first round. He only has one playoff series win in his post-Golden State era as a Brooklyn Net, and without Steph next to him, has never even sniffed the championship ring, other than when he was in Oklahoma City back in 2012. 
Otto Porter Jr. and Gary Payton II just received the bag with the Toronto Raptors and Portland Trailblazers. The way Steph worked off their excellent screen setting and complimented them helped elevate Otto and Gary into big time names on the free agent block. Expect Steph to do the same for Dante DiVincenzo and Jamichael Green, who I've broken down in separate videos. Along with Steph being extremely humble and not having the most popular brand to catapult him into one of the most recognizable faces in pop culture, which LeBron has, Steph gets a ton of unnecessary hate across the internet. Fans who are the same height as Curry, who's below the NBA average at 6'3", constantly downplay his greatness, likely because of jealousy. Steph's not an all-NBA defender, which Draymond Green should be appreciated for, but that doesn't mean Curry's not elite on that end, and it's not like Steph relies on that defense from Green. I went over how Steph's record without Draymond is night and day better than what Draymond's record is without Steph in this video right here. It's silly that I should even have to pit these two all-time greats against each other, though. It goes without saying that the dynasty isn't what it is without Draymond, who I'll make a separate video on. However, because of the toxic hate that Curry gets, in large part due to the lack of defense talking point, with people stating that Draymond carries him on this end, I have to clear things up. Curry ranked just behind the Defensive Player of the Year Marcus Smart this past season at his position in defensive rating. He led the league in steals back in 2015-16. That year, he should have made his first all-defensive team. Speaking of those steals, Curry's averaged at least 1.6 of them in a staggering nine different NBA campaigns. It's time you start watching Steph's communication, lateral movement, and pristine rotations on the defensive end. Michael Jordan had this to say on the days of social media a few days ago, and it reminded me of what Steph has to deal with, as MJ said, quote, I don't know if I could have survived in this Twitter era where you don't have the privacy that you'd want and what seems to be very innocent can always be misinterpreted, end quote. Whether it's a mainstream hater or a casual, What's the worst Stephen Curry take you've ever heard? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shoutout. And the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last upload I asked, who gets the most disrespect on the Milwaukee Bucks? Today's Speaks winner is Jack P, who says Wes Matthews. There were games where he held Tatum to 1 of 11 on field goals, and many games with similar stats. For a guy on a vet min, his ability to step into the starting shooting guard role on a contender and step up was massive. Like Jack just did, you tell the story in Community Speaks, so leave your take.